Good day, everybody. Welcome back to Dalar's Sweet Lick Tactics. Today, we're doing a deep dive because Take was released into the game today. You see him right there on the center of your screen. He is chromatic, shiny, and beautiful. He is summit level 78. Obviously, he is immortal zero. He is X30, all ready for us to dive deep into this guy's kit and figure out, should you build him? Is he worth it? Well, let's find out. So as we do things here, we're going to dive into his kit first. We're gonna explain it in detail. And then we're gonna go do some PVE and some PVP testing with him. So is the intro cinematic kind of cool? Yeah, it's kind of cool. Kind of cool. Like, I don't know what his look is, but like he's got some kind of like weird, like his head has some Hell Hellraiser vibes to me how that mask is just kind of like slapped into his face, but he's got a, like a dark mage type feel. I had originally thought his little capes here were like wings, but they're no, no, it's truly a cape. It's like, you know, it's like a dark, dark wizard doing bad things with his Necronomicon in front of him. Anyway, anyway, summit level 90 or 79. Okay, so let's dive into his kit and then we're going to look at his gear. This guy's actually fa fairly straightforward to uh, to build. If we look at the in-game recommended strategy guide, you see crit rate, crit damage, attack, and the sets are Sun Signet, Overload, and Surge. So basically you wanna build this guy just like a Cariolis. Uh, I was a little bit worried that they were gonna make us play some um, accuracy shenanigans and balancing like Jaina. Jaina is a little bit more difficult to gear, but take, very, very straightforward. It's just surge with crit rate and then attack and crit damage. So very, very cool, very, very easy to do. Let's look at his kit. Let's look at his ultimate first. So take applies three layers of arcane marks to enemies in a selected area, up to five layers, so it's an AoE. Oh. Then he's going to consume all the layers and he's going to attack all the mark targets. For each arcane mark layer, take attacks the enemy with a meteor dealing damage equal to 550% of takes attack. So his ultimate is kind of like two phases. So he's you're, you're gonna select the area, he's gonna mark everybody, but his ultimate only applies three. Then he's gonna consume them all. So he's gonna apply three layers of mark and then consume them all and for anybody that's in that area, he's gonna drop a meteor on their head, dealing damage equal to a percent based on his attack. Talent modifier reads, allied Atlas heroes, upon activating their alts, also apply one layer of arcane mark to targets. So if you think of like Jaina and Cariolis, you kind of want this guy going last. Jaina, she usually gets off her alts fairly quickly. So this is where you're gonna get up to five as your other, your other, um, characters doing their alts first. Now in PVP, say if you have Nord in a resident set, maybe he can get off early and get an alt off beforehand and get you up to five. Jaina, I think is usually the one that gets off to five the quickest. So you are definitely gonna get up to five so that he can do max damage. So you're you're relying on your other Atlas. So sorry, not Jaina, not Jaina. You're just relying on Nord and Shinji if you're running Shinji and then Cariolis. So Jaina cannot contribute to this guy's ultimate. Sorry about that. Exclusive effect, Arcane Meteor Enhancement. If five layers of Arcane Marks are consumed on the same target, additionally attack that target with a huge Meteor. Additionally attack him. Dealing damage equal to 800% of takes attack and also dealing damage to targets around him or around that target equal to 200% of takes attack. So. I do believe this is his X30. It is. So it is his X30. His ultimate exclusive is his X30. What how this works is if you can get it up to five layers, not only is he going to consume them all and then hit them for a big, big super whammy, he's gonna drop a small meteor on each individual target. If it's five layers on that target, then he's gonna drop a large meteor, which is gonna do AoE damage. So you gotta kind of think that you could you have the his ultimate has the possibility of doing drastic amounts of simultaneous alt or AOE damage if everyone has sufficient marks. So you do got to kind of play with timing because again, you do want to be, you do want them to have five marks each. His first common skill, Runic Blast, Take wraps himself in lightning runes, creating a lightning barrier. Take receives a thunder shield, reduces all damage received by 
60% for seven seconds. The shield then explodes, causing damage in a five meter radius equal to 700, oh, 800% of takes attack and knocks back targets. If there are no enemy targets within the, de within the detonation radius, then the bearer, which is take of the thunder shield, restores 100 energy or rage. So if he goes off and no one's around him, he's going to gain more energy. Um, let's see. If there are no enemy targets within the detonation radius, then the bearer of the thunder shield, why would they put rage? Are they going to give us a rage energy? Because he is the bearer of the thunder shield. Oh, I know what that means. If you were to run Ares on this team, because Ares also has a thunder shield. So he can give a thunder shield to, I think it's Nord, Ares, and Cariolus. Those are the ones with thunder shields. Nord and Cariolus are going to gain energy if no one is hit by his blast radius. But if you are running Ares on the team, then he's going to get rage as well. Telemodifier reads, while the thunder shield is active, deals damage to targets around equal to 80% of takes attack every half second. This is normal. This is a normal thunder shield um, mechanic. The exclusive effect, all allies with thunder shield can also trigger the explosion after, what is it, seven seconds? Seven seconds. So cool. All right. You know, not, not a big ability for the most part you're probably going to have people in around you. So you are going to explode and just do damage. You're probably going to not really be gaining anything from the energy or the rage effect. So I don't know that this, this one's kind of subpar. His ultimate is fabulous. This ability, you know, okay. It's damage reduction. Energy need damage reduction because they're kind of squishy. So in, that's probably the main focus of that ability. Second common ability, take unleashes their runic powers or their rune powers causing damage equal to 800% of takes attack. So just an attack. Um, I'm not sure if this is an AOE. Let's see. So bonus effect applies one layer of arcane marks to affected target. So it does sound like it is a single whammy, not a triple whammy or a multiple whammy. And the exclusive effect when hitting, oh, here we go. When hitting three or more targets, instantly reset the cooldown of runic blast which wasn't that special so it does sound like it's an aoe judging by the graphic like just the graphic it almost looks like it's a conal attack um all the energy kind of have a conal attack jaina does have one cariolis has one nord has one so i'm just going to assume that it is a conal attack and if you're going up against summoners then yes you're probably going to hit three people so kind of cool. So it is gonna, that is also going to be another uh, way that you're going to be applying these arcane marks. And then his passive, Sea of Knowledge. Each time take deals damage to the enemy, the subsequent damage take deals to that enemy is permanent, permanently increased by 1.4%. Stacks up to 20 times. So actually it goes up to 1.8. So times 10 is 18%. So you can, you can stack damage up to 36%. If you're hitting the same target over and over again summons they're gonna die and then they're gonna reset but with the, just the summoners yeah you can you have the ability to ramp this guy's damage the longer the fight goes on telemodifier reads at the start of battle takes attack increases by five percent up to thirty percent for each atlas hero so if you are just running him with nord and Cariolus, he can include himself because you think it can go up to six. So they're including Masrani here too as a sixth unit. So he includes himself. So if you just have Take, Carry, and Nord, then his damage is going to go up by 15%. If you have Shinji instead of instead of Jaina, then you're going to go up to 20%. Then if you don't have, say you don't want to run Miranda, you can run Purin. And if you can run Maz, then yeah, 30%. So a little bit of wiggle room on team comps. Exclusive effect, Sea of Knowledge Enhancement, yep. While Take is on the battlefield, the damage received by all allied Atlas heroes in a single attack can't be more than 15% of their max HP. So that's kind of cool. You know, it doesn't really help damage, but it does go to survivability, which Nord does need because we do run Nord as a frontliner. Him taking 15% less damage in a big whack, in a big chunk, is actually kind of necessary for running him as a tank. So... What does this guy do? He kind of has 
inbuilt survivability mechanics in his kit. But if you look at his ultimate, he's got the the ability to nuke really hard and he's scaling attack a lot like Anpu. Anpu also had a scaling attack, attack mechanism. So did Ravenna. Not a lot of people have that where they can slowly ramp up through the fight to a, a high ceiling of attack value, but this guy does. So as I said, gearing is going to be fairly easy on this dude. You're going to run Surge and Sun Signet. What do you want to go for? Well, you want to get your crit rate as high as possible. So I'm going to say 80 to 100. You want 80 to 100 crit rate, and then you want to load up on this guy's crit damage and attack. Uh, that's And that's it. Surge, Sun Signet. Really, no other way. If you can get really fabulous substats or a crit rate substats on your Surge, then yes, you can run either a hero or a uh, overload set. Uh, instead of Signet, but the vast, vast, vast majority of you are probably going to run Signet and Overload. Now, you see, let's just look at mine. So, crit rate hands is what you want. With, uh, you see, I got attack plus one and some crit damage. And that's what you want. You want crit rate, crit damage, and attack substats. Attack helm, I got attack and crit damage plus one. You want attack boots, I got some crit rate and crit damage plus one. And then, like I said, up on the top, it's just attack crit, or crit rate first, and then crit damage and attack uh, as your substats. You see, I got crit rate plus one, crit damage plus one, crit rate plus one, crit damage plus two, crit rate plus two, attack plus one, which gives me my take, and that's how I built him. I, I had to steal a lot of sh uh, Shinji pieces to make this guy's kit tick. So. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the deep dive into his kit. That is how you gear him. Let's go play around out in the world. So, let's do story first. So, let's pull up some energy units and see how they do. Okay, so, uh, keep in mind, uh, my care, I do believe, is Immortal 3 with fully tempered gear. My Janna is Immortal 5 with fully tempered gear. Also keep in mind, though, you can get away with not running Jaina and running someone like Shinji. But Jaina, if you got her built up fairly substantially, you, we'll just watch the damage meters and we'll see how they do, all right? So I, I'm not going to win this. This is, a, this is where I'm stuck and I don't really care. So Nord's going off. He didn't die. Take. He's still alive. But he's dead. Let's let's actually try that again. Let's 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 kind of like let's put him back here. Let's leave our atlas more more uh, which what's, what's the word P protected and see how that does. So you see Jaina, she's gonna get her ult off first, but that does not help. Take and she, and everyone's dead. We actually did better the first time. So boom, you see he's, he's decent damage. He's you know, he was keeping up with Cariolus, but kind of hard to see how well he's doing in when you're just dying that quickly. So let's try other things. Um, I can't show you this because my team's dead. Um, I was doing recording earlier, but my recording corrupted. It's a bad day for corrupted recordings, but this is where you're going to want to use him. This is the primary place where he's going to be beneficial to you because he is a expedition elite hero which you see in the bottom left hand corner of your screen this is the ideal place you want to run that team but let's go to soul mine let's go to soul mine because maybe we can live a little bit longer so let's pull up energy let's make sure we got the right prototype in there and then let's let's again let's pop uh let's pop Jaina into the middle okay and let's go so here you go nord's doing an ult so that will apply layers of arcane mark but let's see. I want to see who goes first, carry or take. It looks like carry is going first. That is ideal. You want your Atlas doing their alts first. But now let's look. See, he's not doing a whole lot of damage. Also, keep in mind the disparity, disparity, disparity in gear and in uh, evolution levels. So not really showing off what he can do and you know what we're still probably gonna lose this and he's dead okay so this was not a good showing um definitely cariolus and jaina were better but keep in mind again cariolus and jaina uh, at least in my roster have better gear so pve 
you know, the, there is what it is, kind of. I cannot, unfortunately, show you guys Crimson Rot because it doesn't open till tomorrow. But he would be ideal in Crimson Rot as well. But does he replace Jane on the team? I don't think so. Uh, where else can we show you guys what's going on? Let's go up. Let's do Sincero Marsh. Let's use some energy. Okay. So we can actually try a couple things here. Let's try energy. And again, let's put them into the back. So let's see how they do. Actually, reset. I want to put Nord in his Marauder stance. All right. All right, so this fight, we're probably not going to die. Um, and it is going to last out longer, so we're going to get a, a, a more true gauge of what this guy can do. So, see, Carry. I think Carry went first. No, it looks... Oh, okay, Alt. So Nord is going. Carry's going. And now Take's going. Perfect. So we should have full marks. Uh, Carry Olus is obviously leading the pack because remember that Sincero Marsh also uh, will benefit from true damage. So people that can't do true damage in their kits uh, naturally are going to suffer. So that's why Carrie's doing so well. Carrie and Nord both do true damage. But let's do it. Look at the comparison between Jaina, Jaina and Take. Because Jaina is only going to benefit from the true damage under Miranda's bubble. Take is only going to benefit from the true damage while under the Miranda's bubble. So we can kind of compare the two. And you can see my maxed out Jaina did 11.3 million damage. But my Immortal Zero Hyper Evolved 79 take did 11.3 million damage. So, is this a definitive uh, example of him being better than Jaina? Well, you know what? Maybe. I don't know. But maybe. Maybe. Pardon that little sound. Let's try it again. But this time, I want to remove Jaina. And I want to bring in... Shinji. Let's see what that does. Okay. So we'll see how Shinji, uh, if he can, if, if he is better than Take. Because right now it appears he is, but again, Shinji also does true damage. So my Shinji is much a better equivalent to Take because he doesn't have hyper evolved or he doesn't have tempered gear. And he is not highly evolved. Uh, and yeah, Shinji did really well, but I do recall that Shinji also does true damage in his kit. Uh, and you see, it was all the Cariola show, and then Shinji, and then... Where's Nord? Nord, then Shinji, then Take. So, you know, is he decent? Uh, oh, he's okay. He's all right, but he's not blowing the lights out in PvE. He just isn't. He, he, um, he isn't. <laughs> so, I don't know what, I don't want to write him off, but he's just kind of, for PvE specifically, kind of mediocre. Kind of mediocre, but again, keep in mind the dispar disparities between him and my other energy heroes. So now let's go, where else, where else, where else? Um, that's really it. Um, so yeah, he is going to shine in here because he, he is gaining so much bonuses in here. So this is a one place where he is going to shine, Exotic Expedition, which I can't show you because I am done for the offensive phase. So now let's go look at some PvP. Uh, let's go to the friends list. Now, where is he? So let's try... What, who was I going against? Grimlock. All right, Grimlock. So Grimlock has your typical summoner team, right? This is the vast majority of you are going to see this team when you're fighting a summoner team. So we're going to put him, where's, look, he's got his Ampu in the back. So we're going to slide him kitty corner to Ampu. Uh, but I do believe I'm going to put him in the back just to try to keep him from being stunned because I want to get a good sense of what he can do. Um, yep, yep, I got my Nord in Resonant. Everybody else is good. Let's go. If you were, if you did not have Book, I would say run uh, Jaina in Resonant as well. I do have a Resonant kit or, uh, set for her. So let's see how we do. So Jaina, Jaina's popping off. You know, obviously she's going to be, she's still the queen of damage in this team. And you see that 
Take is going before Cariolus. So that happened so fast, as it should, because it's energy. I want to see how we did. So Jaina did 39.8. Cariolus did 32.6. And Take did 32.1. So respectable. Very, very, very respectable. Also keep in mind, I like run. I You're going to want to run Take in PvP because he's giving your Atlas heroes, specifically Nord and Cariolus, more, a lot more survivability. And they need that in PvP. So let's do that again. Let's fight Grimlock again. Uh, let's let's move let's let's move Jaina to the back. In fact, no. Let's let's try this. And now let's see how they do. I'm gonna watch the damage meter a little bit more. So Jaina, uh, obviously standing out. Cariolus, huge numbers. Now all the energy are way up there. They're kind of equal. Take is he was at the bottom of that, but he had an alt on deck. He had an alt on deck that went really well. He still did 21 million damage, but everyone else beat him. So I think he has a place on the PvP team. Now, we we could try this, but uh, Hellfire, who has probably the best summoner team that I have ever seen, um, he's got Maz on the team as well. So he is running the idealized version of the summoner team, and I don't think I'm going to be able to touch this team. But let's just run it. Uh, and see how we do. So let's just focus on the damage meter and let's see how he does in comparison. I got him in the back corner because I'm gonna try to keep him not stunned. So he is, uh, he's in hes in the first, he's in the lead. Uh, so him, he is beating Jaina too, surprisingly. Jaina though, is just going over and over and over and over and over again. Nord is dead. Take is in, in the lead for damage. By a vast margin. But we are still dead. Uh, keep in mind that was a max out summoner team. But look at these damage numbers. He by far exceeded everybody on this team. So that was impressive. Well, what else can we do? Let's see. I, I want to look for some... Okay, here's a Vanguard team with Maz. Let's see how we do against Vanguard since Cariolus does stop charges. So unfortunately, they stole Jaina. They stole her to the back, but that's 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 kind of nice. I want to see how Take does. Uh, oh, he's stunned though. How we doing? I don't think we're gonna win. Not with a Maz. Not with an A7 Maz on the field. Nord is still up. So come on, Jaina's dead. It's it's all about Take and Cariolus. And you see Cariolus vastly outdoing Take in damage. And now everybody's dead, and we suck. So Cariolus. It was uh, definitely the the king of the king of the show on that one. That did not work. But again, I shouldn't be going up against these Maz teams. What does Omnis side run? Okay, here's a Vanguard team with no Maz, no Maz, no Maz on the Vanguard team. Let's see how we do. So this is more of a, a sampling of what you're probably going to go against. So Jaina, she's the one man army. You know, she's not contributing to the Atlas bonuses, but. Look at her damage numbers. She is still the queen of PvP and, and, or for damage on the energy team. And let's see how we did. So Take did nothing. Take did nothing on that team. <clears throat> Three million measly points. Uh, what does Bad Juju want? He just won Summon Arena. Oh yeah, we just tried against Bad Juju. What is Spectre? So the Vanguards, we already tried. Which Drifter running? So he's running Assassins with Energy. Let's just run it, see what happens. So unfortunately, everybody's stunned. Assassins with a natural counter to Energy. So I don't see this going well, although we just nuked all of their Energy users. Jane is dead. Take's still going though. Take is doing nothing in damage again. So given the fact that all of his abilities and his passive are all like damage reduction uh, support abilities. Unless you're going up against summoners, he's not doing, he doesn't do too well. It's the only reason why he's beating Jane is because Jane is dead. Um, Cariolus is dead too. We did win, but um, I don't think Take is good at single target PVP fights 
or single target fights in general. I think his his forte is going to be summoner teams. So, you know, I want to find a tank team. Not a lot of people running tanks anymore. No, oh, nah, it's not a real tank team though. Come on, everybody and their and their dog used to run tanks. Now it's like pulling teeth trying to find one. Everyone's running vanguards or assassins. Uh, it's an energy team with Cariolis. Zoso is running uh, a six-man army. Sorry, not going to do it. Assassins. Come on. Come on. Okay. Uh, hunters. Okay, well, let's try it up against a hunter team. There is no Artemis. So this is a just a straight hunter team. So, you know, hunters versus energy, you're not going to see this very often. The pushbacks are definitely annoying. That's for sure. Like Nord, what is he ulting into? He's ulting into Ray. Like, it looks like we're going to win this, but look at Take's damage. Take is, hasn't even done a million damage. So that just kind of backs up what I say about I I don't I think that his only real use case is going to be against summoners. Like he 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 makes the summoner team or the summoner counter better. Okay, here's tanks. Let's try tanks with Purin. Let's see. Because tanks uh, energy is also a natural counter to tanks. So here comes the Teresh throw. It is stopped. But Take, I don't, don't think, is going to add uh, almost nothing to the tank counter. Yeah, you see, look at his damage. It is, again, it is... Uh, is he going to crack a million? Uh, yeah, he'll probably just crack a million. But his damage is not doing well compared to everyone else. So I think we learned a couple things with PvP. Take is not good on the energy counter against tanks. Um, I think that while, yes, he is giving some survivability, I think you might benefit more with, like, Purin on the team uh, instead of Take against tanks, but you definitely do want him on the team against summoners. Again, this is tanks. Let's try it again. Again, because uh, energy is the natural counter to tanks. But I I just don't think his damage is... Ooh, we are, we are completely nuking this now. Yep, that, uh, that went poorly for them. I don't think Take even got an ultimate off. Let's see. Uh, 1.5 million damage. Yeah, really did good there, bud. Really did good there, bud. So let's go back up. We're going to end this off with another uh, Grimlock fight. Um, let's let's take Jaina out. Let's put Purin in. Because Purin's also going to count as an Atlas. So now we're not only... We are also activating the 4, four out of 5 bonus for Atlas... But uh, Jane, he's also going to get a five percent increase in damage as well. Let's let's. This might be the play because this is what you're probably going to want to run for tanks anyway. I'm just I really hate leaving Jaina off this team. And also keep in mind that Purin's alt that she just did counts, but it's not going to apply any marks. So, what was the speed on that? How fast did that go? That was. I can't tell. But he didn't do a whole lot of damage on that. It was all Cariolis. Let's let's see who's faster. Let's see if I can... We're, let's watch the clock here now. So, uh, we got T-minus, I'm going to say, 12 seconds. So, Carry did an ult. So, now, when Take does his ult, he's going to be consuming five stacks. That was 11 seconds. That was an 11-second fight. So now let's pop Jaina back in there and see if it is faster. Because I, I think Jaina, Jaina's just does so much damage. Boom. Although we're seven seconds, eight, nine, 10, 11. Nope, Purin was faster. So, huh. Jaina might be out on this team. I don't want to say it, but even though Jaina did so much damage, 81 million, the by far the most, I think Purin may be better for the energy team for PvP. 
I'll let you guys make your decision. Tell me what you think down in the comment section below. But uh, what did we learn? Final, final thoughts. Do I like him? Yeah, I do like him. I like what he brings to the. For let's 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 break this up. PVE. Okay, he's gonna be good on the PV or the energy team in Twilight. He's probably gonna be required on the next endless battle for energy. He's probably gonna be required on the Twilight 16 boss somewhere. He is required in the exotic expedition, and he's probably gonna be required or a boosted hero in the guild expedition. So where for PVE, I, I think he is only good because the game is making us use him. But um, so after all of those bonuses fall off, his his usefulness for PVE is probably going to go down. But for PVP, I do think he has a place on the team because he gives survivability to the other Atlas heroes. Does he nudge Jaina off the team? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. He might. He might. So for PVE, I think is going to be where his home is going to be after all, you know, in three months after all of his buffs have expired for PVE game modes. Uh, so he's not bad. I'm going to, I'm kind of going to rank him the same as I did Amat. I'm going to give him like a B plus, <laughs> an A or a B plus. Or no, A negative B plus. Sorry. Yeah. A negative B plus. He's not overpowered at all. Uh, he's not really blowing the lights out in any piece of game mode, in any piece of game content. He's just, he's just a unit that we can use, but you don't have to chase him unless you want those buffs in the PVE uh, places where he has to be used. So ladies and gentlemen, tell me your rating of take in the comment section below. The word of the day is going to be Dark Magician because that's kind of what he looks like and what the vibe he pulls off. So tell me your rating on the hero. I'm giving him B plus, A minus. And then Dark Magician, put that down in the comment section below. I will know you made it to the end of this video and I will thank you profusely. Till next time, ladies and gentlemen, cheers, peace. Bye-bye.